Next example, we're going to be looking at some chemistry problems. So there's a chemist, and he has one solution that's 80% acid, and another solution that's weaker, it's only 30% acid. What is needed is a 200 liter solution that is 62% acid. So the chemist will prepare it by mixing the two solutions. How much of each should be used? So I've got some amount of the 80%, some amount of the 30%, and all together I need 200 liters of 62% acid. So again, what are our unknowns? What are we solving for? How much of each should be used? So I'm going to say, let x be the amount of the 80% acid. I don't have to write that out every single time. I can just write x. And I'm going to let y be the amount of the 30% acid. And the little lines just mean what follows from the previous. Okay. So we need to build a system. So we need two different uh, relations that we'll be able to solve. So the first one is pretty straightforward. In total, we need 200 liters of that solution. Don't care about the acidity yet. But I know all together when I'm adding in the amount of the 80% and the amount of the 30% that I have 200 liters um, all together. So what is that going to look like? Adding together the amount of the 80% and the amount of the 30%, we need 200 liters of that all together. All right, the next piece. So we have to determine yeah, our acidity in total. We need it to be 62% acid. So in total, I've got 200 liters, and I know that that mixture is 63% acid, or 62, excuse me, 62% acid. So if I want to figure out the total amount of acid that's coming from, you know, the end solution, what are we looking at? 62% of 200 will give me the amount of acid involved. So, as a decimal, not as a percentage, 62 is 0.62. So, I know in the end, that's the amount of acid that's coming out of that solution. The total amount that's there, and then the part that's actually acidic. And it will tell us how many liters or milliliters, whatever it is. So, we need these other two pieces. I need the amount of acid coming from part X, and the amount of acid coming from part Y, the weaker solution. So however much I'm adding in of the 80%, I know that the amount of acid coming out of there is going to be 80% of however much I'm plugging in, or pouring in, excuse me. And same story for Y, I know it's going to be 30% of whatever I'm dumping in, the amount that I'm pouring in. So part acid plus part acid equals part acid. And all of our units need to line up. So liters, liters, liters. You know, part that we're pouring, part that we're pouring the whole. Part acid, part acid, whole acid. Should make sense. So simplifying this, I'm just going to calculate this value. 62% of 200, we could do the math. I'm just going to save you the time. So this one hasn't changed. And I'm going to rewrite this multiplication order. It feels a little funny. And 62% of 200 is 124. So I don't like decimals. If I can help it, I want to move away from having to deal with uh, decimals involved. So how can I alter this system to get rid of those decimals? I can multiply everything down here by a factor of what? 10, because I need to move the decimal one time, and I'll have to do it everywhere so we can't forget about this guy at the end. So we didn't alter the first one, and the system still equivalent, all three of them are, but now we're looking at what line down here, 8x, 3y, and 1,240. So now that we have whole numbers, we're less likely to make mistakes. I would hope anyway. This doesn't look very good. 200. And we need to solve. So 
I'm going to use that substitution method since I have two choices that are pretty nice to solve. I'm going to go ahead and solve the first one for y. So if I want y on its own, I need to subtract x from both sides. And now, wherever I see y in my second equation, I can input what I know it's equivalent to. So plugging that into 2, what are we looking at? 8x, and I've got 3 times what I know y is equivalent to. And that's equal to 1240. So let's go ahead and solve for x. Now it's an equation in one variable, which we can deal with. So we're looking at 8x and 600 minus 3x is 1240. We can combine our like terms, 8x, and I'm taking away 3, so we're left with 5 there. We've got 5x plus 600 is 1240. If we subtract 600 from both sides, what are we looking at? 5x is 640. Divide by 5, what do we get out? 128. Right. So what does that give us, and what are our units on these things? So at the very beginning, what did we let x be? The amount of 80% acid. And we were asked to figure out how much of each should be used. So what units should we be putting on our amount here? Everything has been in liters so far. So 128 liters. And we also need the amount for the 30%, that weaker acid, how much of that do we need to add in? So I know that Y is 200 minus whatever I'm pouring in from the 80%. So Y is going to be 200 minus 128, which is 72 liters. So what does that mean for summing it up? What is our solution here? So I need 128 liters of 80% acid and 72 liters of 30% acid to make 200 liters of 62% acid. So mixing the part, mixing the part, getting the whole. We're working towards 62% acid in 200 liters of solution. And again, we can always plug it back in and check, actually do the math and see if I add these two together, do I get 200? And if I take the acidic part plus the acidic part, do I get the total acid part? All right, moving from chemistry to candy. Next example, bulk wholesaler wishes to mix some candy worth 45 cents per pound and some worth 80 cents per pound in order to make 350 pounds of a mixture worth 65 cents per pound. How much of each type of candy should be used? So it's going to be very similar setup to the chemistry problem, but again, we usually like dealing with um, monetary values. Easier to think about. So what are we being asked to find? How much of each type of candy should be used? So again, sign variables to your unknown. I'm going to let x be the amount of the 45 cent candy and y be the 80 cent candy amount. Alright, and we're going to keep those units in cents. So if I keep 80 cents as it stands as a whole number instead of dealing with the decimal, the rest of the units also have to be in the cents. We can't mix between um, whole number, you know, dollar values. Keeping it as 0.45 is different than working with 45 cents in equation wise. So, building an equation, what are we looking at? We need a system. So, altogether, I want 350 pounds of a mixture. So what I'm pouring in from the 45 cent, what I'm pouring in from the 80 cent, together I want 350 pounds of it. So what's coming from X and what's coming from Y all together needs to give me 
350 pounds. And we want to talk about uh, the total price. So the total price of the 45 cent, total price of the 80 cent, and then the total price of the 350 pound mixture in the end. So if I have 350 pounds, and the price per pound for that guy is 65 cents. If I multiply 350 by 65, that'll give me the total amount in cents of the mixture in the end. And how do we get to that total mixture? I have the total price of what I'm adding from X, so 45 cents times however many pounds I'm taking from that pile. And I'm adding to it 80 cents per pound of what I'm adding from that other pile. So total price plus total price equals total price. Check. Amount plus amount equals total amount. Check. All of our units have to line up. If they don't, you know you made a mistake somewhere in that setup. All right. So have a few different choices. You can go whichever route you desire. I'm going to go ahead and do elimination just to get practice with both of them again. We've used substitution in the past few. And I want to get rid of x. So if I want to get rid of x, I'm going to multiply this top one by a factor of negative 45. And the resulting system, still equivalent, but different looking, is going to be negative 45x, negative 45y, and negative 15750. And nothing changed down here. 45x, 80y, 22,750. When we multiply those together. So when we add those two systems, we design the x's to go away. They're going to be gone. We're left with 35y's and 7,000. So when we do that division, divide it by 35, what are we looking at? y is going to be equal to 200. And since we know y is 200, we can go ahead and solve for x as well. Then we'll give them some units and sum it up. So I know together, when I'm adding 200 pounds, might as well just put the units on it now, since we're dealing with amounts, 200 pounds of the 80 cent, and how many pounds of the 45 cent will give me 350 all together. So x is going to be 350 minus what I know y is equivalent to. And I know I'm using 200 pounds from that pile. So we're left with 150. So, summing it up, what do we need? We need 200 pounds of, which one did we assign that to? 80 cent candy and 150 pounds of the 45 cent candy to make 350 pounds of 65 cent candy. All right, and again, we could double check. Adding those amounts together, do we get 350? Yes, and then looking at the total price, for the amount of x that we used, total price and the amount of y that we used, if we add those together, is that our total price that we're charging in the end? The very last example, again, is dealing with monetary values, and we're talking about a copy center. So a student assistant at the University Copy Center has some nickels and dimes to use for change when students make copies. The value of the coins altogether is 740. There are 26 more dimes than nickels, how many of each coin are there? So again, that last line, how many of each kind of coin are there? So let's assign variables to our unknowns. I'm gonna let n be the number of, what do you think? Nickels. And d be the number of dimes. All right, so we need to build a system. So it's a little bit different than what we've seen but nothing we can't handle. So the first piece, not gonna deal with the total amount yet. I'm gonna look at that second to last line. There are 26 more dimes 
Then there are nickels. 26 more dimes than nickels. So my first question is, do I have more dimes or do I have more nickels? 26 more dimes. So my dimes are going to be more than my nickels. So if we want to set up an equation stating that, my dimes are going to be 26 more than the number of nickels. So I have more dimes, and again, 26 more than nickels. What we're adding it to tells us by that more than piece. All right, so we have one equation, we need another one. The other piece of information that we know is the total price. Altogether, $7.40. So I'm speaking about money in dollars, not in cents. Seven forty. So if I have dollars here, my units here need to be in dollars. So instead of saying, you know, my nickels are five cents, how can we represent it in that unit, in the whole dollar unit? So what is each of them worth? So a nickel, in terms of a dollar, is going to be five cents, so point zero five, and a nickel. 10 cents or 0.1 dollars. So since we have dollar units, we need dollar units added together. So all together I've got 740 worth and the amount coming from my nickels is going to be how much each nickel is worth, 5 cents, times the number of nickels that I have. That'll give me my total part that's coming from the nickels. We need to add to that what else? 0.1 times D. Number of dimes times the unit will give us the total price coming from the dimes. I don't like dealing with these though. I don't like decimals, so how can I get rid of it? Didn't change the first one. What do we need to multiply the second one by? Factor of 100 to move the decimal to. So now we're looking at 5N, and if I move it to 10D, and again, don't forget it over here as well, 740. So in the end, we really did what here? We changed it all back into cents, cents, cents. Okay, but what was given to us, the information, was as dollars. So we can't mix the two, but we can convert it all together. So with this now, how do we want to solve? I have a variable that's isolated. Easiest route probably to go is just to substitute. So I know D is equivalent to 26 plus N. So I'm going to sub the first one into the second. So 5N plus 10 times what I know D is equivalent to gives me 740. So we want to get rid of those parentheses. We'll start solving. Looking at 5N. 260 plus 10n gives me 740. And we want to combine our like terms. So I've got 5n and 10n will give me 15. 260 is 740. If we subtract 260 from both sides, we're looking at 480. And we want n on its own. We'll divide by 15. n is equivalent to... 32. So what does that tell us? What did we let n be? The number of nickels. And together I know that I have 26 more dimes than nickels. So we can figure out how many dimes we have. Number of dimes is 26 plus n. 26 plus 32, we're looking at 58 dimes. So all together, there are 58 dimes and 32 nickels totaling 740. And again, if you think you made a mistake, go ahead and plug the numbers back in. If I have 32 nickels and 58 dimes, how much money do I have in total? And if we add those two together, do we really have that relationship between the dimes and the nickels?